Hey guys, so sorry I'm a bit delayed on this, but I'm trying to work some things out. I tried rearranging the puppy's play area today. Um, I know I've been talking about some late piece brushes and products, and you probably see all of these items here and wondering if these are all late piece or not. No, it's not late piece products. This is pretty much a waste of money, all of this are the different types of brushes that you as a pet owner at home might go through buying one at Petco, one at PetSmart, one somewhere else, buying one online, one working for this, one working for that. You as a new groomer, um, not sure which one you need. Essentially, some of these I've used, other ones I got just to see what the differences were and actually compare them. It's more of like hands-on and kind of just test it out what the differences really were with them. <clears throat> and the main difference was that each brush is designed to do one specific thing. They are marketing pretty much a specific task or a perfect item for one person. But if you have two dogs or different types of coats you want to handle, whether it's long during winter and short during summer, then you're going to need two of their brushes. Where I just strongly believe if it's a high quality and made properly, you really only need one brush. And that's what I went on the hunt for at this grooming expo this year to find out. There's a few on the top of the line. Um, not exactly comparable. They do have differences with them, but they're for specific items and they will last completely. So before going into the ones that I just got, before I pull these off the table, I'll just quickly show you. These are pretty much, most of these here are made by the same manufacturer. I just really don't understand why one manufacturer would have seven different types of slicker brushes. These are all slickers, which means that they're just fine pin heads, made, mostly made for detangling. They're not pin brushes, they're not combs, they're not bristle brushes. If you're looking at a slicker, even right now after checking them, I know that there's something different in each one, but I don't see a point of having this many different ones. There's curved ones. These essentially have the same pin heads, but this one has, you can kind of push it to remove any dead hair or anything trapped in there. So you're going to pay a couple extra dollars just for that. But then these pins are the same type of pins that they put on this one with the flat back. But then the flat back, they have two different ones. One with a rubber tip on the end, one without a rubber tip on the end. Yeah, right there, you can see. And then they go, same thing, but now this is a double-sided brush and it's more flexible. Um, essentially, they're, I believe they're just making one thing a little different on each one. Trying to pull to the masses and... Again, goes back to if it's the right quality and the right type of tool, um, you're really just going to need one product. Now, these ones are a little bit different. Um, again, same thing, another one with the pushback. These two are pretty much the same, different companies, but both curved. The pins seem appear just about the same in rows because of the way the plastic um Part is that removes the hair to help clean it. It has to be in a straight row, which we'll go into that in a minute when I go to the matte zapper and the regular daily brush. But this one just doesn't have the rubber pin heads, which some of you might think this is a really sharp um, aluminum or steel, which might scratch the dog. So they put the rubber tips on there for safety so you don't scratch too much. So they have now a mix of couple of that I just went through have a flexible head but one side is still steel or aluminum but now has the rubber tip but then as some of you know the zoom groom or other items that are made to remove shedding has rubber tips or just for massaging so the other side of this brush is actually completely rubber <clears throat> on a, a flexible brush so it gives you that I believe if you're not a professional groomer you might like the flexible head because then you could actually see how much pressure you're putting on your dog. If you're putting a little too much pressure, the head kind of bends where these are going to be a little more 
um, aggressive or be get directly in there, but you won't realize how much pressure you're putting on if you put a little too much pressure at the beginning and might end up brush burning your dog or scra scratching them. Um, so this is another slightly mid-range um, brand, which does have the finer points but these heads are more flexible which will reduce down the chance of brush burn but i think i've only used this one like once or twice and right now what i could see why i stopped using it was pretty much if it's reducing the amount of friction on it or the danger of scraping it you'd want it to go back to its original pin position essentially the way it's made is where you want the pins to stay i'm gonna say if i go back like this I almost feel like the pins back here are almost straightening out. They're no longer at the angle that they were um, developed at. So that kind of gets rid of the purpose of the brush. And then this one you're paying for again, just to easily clean it. Well, if you have a dog shedding that bad, I'm sure it's going to take you two seconds to realize you just grab a comb and you go like this and it cleans it itself. You don't need a button on the back to make it specifically just for that. <coughs> Now this one's a really good product, has the pins scattered. It is a firm back, um, ergonomic, but again, you'd want to just be careful with this brush because it doesn't have much give or a cushion back on it that's going to reduce the friction on it. So this one actually works really well except for the danger of you scratching your dog or giving it brush burn. So all of these. I didn't use half of these. It was more I got some of the rest just to show the differences um, a while back. But what I've been using, I'll show you right now, before I went to the expo, because I didn't know exactly how much I was going to be spending, was I turned all of that into these two brushes. I have a firm Andes, which does have decent length pins. They could be longer, but it's going to cost more on that. So this is going to get in there, any tough tangles, any doodles, any double coated, thick coated, it's not going to flex on it and kind of give way and, and push back on the coat. But So I use this for uh, thicker coats, larger dogs, trying to get larger surface area. You can see it's bigger, um, basic all around brush. Once I've gone through the first with that, Artero makes a good flexi brush. Why I like this is one side is for dematting and the other side is for finishing on the brush. Um, <clears throat> the flexibility is going to be the same, but the difference with a dematting brush or detangling is the placement of the pins. We'll see in the other um, brushes I'll show you. Probably show a little better, but if you're, I think I've said before, if you're detangling or dematting, you're going to want all of the heads positioned in a straight row. You're essentially trying to straighten out those hairs and get them as straight as possible, whether you're <clears throat> hand drying the dog or just brushing it out after you've towel dried it. You need them to be in straight lines. Otherwise, if you have scattered pins, <coughs> excuse me, if you have scattered pins, that's just going to kind of basic brush it at the end. You're just doing that finishing. But if you're trying to remove um, tangles, mats, anything like that, undercoat, you're going to need it to pull straight up. So you can see some of these pins are, it looks like there's um, groups of two, but you'll see like they're kind of straight down each group where when I flip this around, you're going to probably not even see a row right away. It's going to kind of just look all scattered to you. Can't really make out a row. It's more of like all the pins are in a diamond on it. So that's that way. It just goes in there grabs all the loose hair. You don't have any tangles to worry about. You're just going to brush and get that final finish on it. So, essentially this, you could get away with it. It's going to take longer time if you have more difficult mats, other issues to get through, longer hair, um, angles of the pins, but putting in a little bit of work these brushes essentially could get you through it. Yeah, I'd probably go through um, a matte splitter or a matte breaker a little bit more. Um, 
because some of the mats like this one being too flexible of a head, it just wouldn't have that support on it to actually get in the mat, grab it, and slowly break it out. Um, so I've probably used the dematter, which essentially is like a, a straight blade going against the skin safely and cutting the hair so that way you can pull the mat out. Um, where these other higher end um, brushes, the slicker brushes, they do have rounded tips so they can get in there and be very gentle on your dog's coat, um, be comfortable for them. So you're actually detangling them with with ease and not too much um, pressure against them or too much tension. This is Spikey. He was going to be one of my demo dogs today, but I didn't let my mom know because she just brushed him. So, <laughs> might do a little bit on him. Probably not. He's sad enough with his brushing today, plus there's not much left. She went all the way down to a comb. Missy's going to be a pain in the butt. But we'll get to that because I do have the products to test right now. So, for going to that, so using these brushes... It's just a matter of um, the technique and that you're not going to want to brush dry hair at first. Essentially, if it's dry hair, there's too much friction. So to reduce the friction, they have detangling sprays, leave-in conditioners, dematters, all of those items. Essentially, you could either get a spray, a gel, something you're going to want to put in. If you just do it against dry hair, that's like passing sandpaper over the top of your head. It's not really going to do anything other than pull at the hair from the roots because it's not going to actually um, get into those mats and break them apart. So actually I'm going to grab hot real quick and I'm trying to see if there's something else I had here. Oh, just real quick before I grab her. So the difference with yeah, this is just for the puppies I have. Bristle brush. It's just more of a rough, like a horse head type brush. It's not really going to get into the hair or break it apart. It's more of spreading those oils, um, loosening the hair, loosening some dander, loosening all of that. You can use a firm bristle on it. And this one is one of the rubber tipped, but it's small, slicker brush. So I'll use this a lot on the puppies just to get them used to actual brushing and the sensation of that to get them used to it. So these are kind of like starter brushes, I'd say, compared to those, because if I used this on a puppy, it definitely would scratch him. Um, one, because the head's not flexible, so I might put a little too much pressure on it, plus it's not as um, as much, I wouldn't say attention given to it, it's just, it's sharper, the actual tip of these heads. Um, not sharp enough that it's going to cut your dog all the time. It's just the puppy's skin is very sensitive, so you just want to be cautious with that. So let me grab hot real quick. That way I can start doming because I have not used these brushes yet at all. I was waiting to actually use them right now so you can get an actual real reaction of what it's like the first time um, I'm using them, what I think of them. And let's go into a little bit more why I chose these ones over the other brands that are high quality, just as good quality, but I believe have slightly different purposes from what they were made for. So I'll be right back. Okay, so my demo dog, Hot, is probably going to run for me. She, I went to Intergroom last Saturday, a week ago. I have not brushed her since, I think, like two days before Intergroom because I knew I was getting all this. So she's probably, she knows what's about to happen. <laughs> she has a, over a week of not brushing her. So I, I can actually see what it's like. I didn't want her to be all perfect. I'm not, that's what my mom just did to the other dog. 
No, I can't really fix him, but she's good. Um, so she has, she doesn't really have mats, but some of those tangles I can see on her might be a little less comfortable. Sit down. You can wait there. Um, so quickly just go into <clears throat> these are Les Pouche. They're slicker brushes. They do <clears throat> the bit, first big difference on what they make are the quality of the steel and aluminum. I could just feel even like the sides of it. It's a lot smoother. Um, so that's one less reference plus the, the actual pin heads themselves. They're not as as sharp. So it's going to be a lot more sensitive on the skin. <clears throat> you can see they're also a little bit longer. Well, actually, to me, they seem a lot longer than this one there. Not only longer, what you're going to want to look at is the part that's actually angled, because that's the part that's going to get into the mat or the coat. The angled part that's going to go into it, where this one is angled about halfway down the pin. Um, if it was a lower quality aluminum or steel and it was angled to that low, the actual, <clears throat> um, sorry, the strength wouldn't be there pretty much halfway down when you go to brush it would just continue to bend it wouldn't have its, st its structure would it maintain on the brush so that's where you could tell it's a lot better quality on this just because um like i can bend this back and it's pretty much going to return to its original position that's one thing and then the actual flexibility on the brush that's a medium firm <clears throat> so that's actually good for some <clears throat> basically always like a shih tzu or a maltese where this is their mat zapper so again anything to remove the mats you're going to want them um aligned directly in a straight line but this is very firm yet they spend extra time aligning them and softening the tips even a little bit more because they know you're going to put more pressure on it to get actually in there i lost my dogs <clears throat> but even i'm trying to see if I show that much, which looks like it's been in the hole, all of the teeth back, they all return to their original position. So you're not losing, um, like this brush here, all the pins on the outsides kind of lost their shape, especially on this side, the side that's supposed to be the finishing side. You can kind of see those tips are off. Out just from either getting stuck in a tight um, mat or tangle and then it getting bent it just stayed out there it almost looks like a straight it's a uh, straight pin it's no longer it doesn't have that angle anymore to actually get into the middle of a mat hi Angela <clears throat> Here I go. my dogs are running they see brushes and they went run <laughs> <clears throat> so she's pain. Normally don't have to loop her, but she thought she had the knife free. Just in case. Take my hands off of her. So this is <clears throat> I'm just gonna go over the basics on like I said why I chose the Poosh brushes over other brand, I don't really want to say which other brands. <laughs> I'm not marketing one specific or another. It's just why I chose these ones. Um, they push. You might think this brush is a little small, especially considering this is a Havanese. She's only about um, nine pounds. You have a lot bigger of a dog. <clears throat> they do have double sided ones, so it covers more surface area. It's going to have two this way. <clears throat> but even if you're doing the larger dog, sensitive areas under or the armpits are going to be harder to get at so me personally i'd probably rather just use a small one it would be extra strokes i might be saying that because i don't do a lot of those larger doodles um but it's the control over it. so the ergonomic state of the brushes um the pins are not as long as some brands would have which the other brands that have longer pins, they're saying could get deep down into those mats. 
righteous skin, but I just believe if you're getting one of these high-end brushes and actually taking care of your dog, you're not going to be fighting those large tangles, those large mats, if you're keeping on top of it. I mean, I don't know if I'm just going to spend 60 to $80 a brush and only use it once a month. If you're going to be doing that, you might as well just pay the groomer to do all of the work. So if you're going to be using it at home, it's, I figure, that's why I, I liked this Arturo one. They do have one that's a little more firm, but it was more like the size of it. It was just easy to handle. Went around where I would need to. Um, so before I, the main thing I would use would be the Quicker Slicker and the Arturo Slicker. So right now, for the first time, she has... Yeah, it's not matted. They're starting to stick together a little bit. Especially like here. Um, so I, like I said, I haven't brushed her in over a week. So they want to see. So I have the Delay Pouche, their detangling spray. Anytime before you brush, regardless of how matted or not matted it is, you don't want to brush dry hair because you're either going to break it, you're going to pull on it, or you're going to rip through it causing a lot of pain. So first thing you want to do, again, I have continuous spray bottles like this one's a pump and spray. Might want to not want to use aerosol cans because it's just not healthy for you. But this is the first time I'm using this one. Usually, like this, I have in a continuous spray bottle. But so you just want you just want not even really dampen it. Kind of just put. It smells really good. I don't know exactly what it smells like, but. I know everybody was asking if it, how the smell was. Um, it's not coconuts, but it's like some tropical island fruit, and just got me really relaxed. <laughs> I don't know if that's relaxed too, but so first one I'm going to go to is I'm going to just go straight to the mat zapper. If you have it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just for mats. It is no um it is said to just remove the tangles 50 percent quicker so if i'm using a smaller size one and i know she's not that sensitive so one thing you know so the reason that um don't use the longer pins or the longer heads is because typically when you're going through something like this you're going to be line brushing them anyway so you, which means you're just starting at one spot and just going across so if I'm doing that on every section, I don't need a long mat, a long pinhead to actually go from here all the way in because I'm really just adding a little bit more each time. And I'm not even really doing anything to her. The other thing that I liked about Le Pouche was they were advertising that the hair will stay in there until you pull it out of like the actual comb which they have like i showed you before the ones that remove the hair on its own yeah the hair could be a bit annoying if it's in the comb but it's even more annoying if it's flying around especially if it's your own dog and you're doing just your dog at home and then you start getting hair everywhere as a groomer if we start getting hair everywhere we don't care we know that we're going to leave home with hair in our um hair in our hair, hair in our food probably, and probably not eat something because there's hair in it, but I don't understand how they, they're advertising that the hair stays in it until you take it out. Still trying to figure that one out, but it appears like it's so. But, so what's nice with being Matt Zapper on both sides is I'm sure at some point, if there's too much hair in there, it's not going to be doing the job the same way, but you just flip it over and start using the other side. And I'm barely doing anything. I'm just kind of padding in there, going line by line. And I could already see most of her leg is done. Where I can go straight to my comb. Essentially, that took me, and that's while talking and going slow, it took me like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. So even if you have to brush a dog out, I'm going straight through already with my comb, which means 
which means my clippers with the comb attachment on it will have no issue going through her. So this is still dirty coat. I've not bathed her. I've not done anything like that to her. Um, but just those few strokes with the mat zapper has already gone through. So I just want yeah, there's, it's it was a slight I could feel I felt where it was like it's definitely still down here. I didn't I didn't start all the way at the bottom. But there's no resistance left on this part here. And I literally just went through each line just once. I didn't have to do two passes on it. And I'm not pushing all the way against the skin. Again, if I did push all the way against the skin, it's rounded and created in a gentle way that it's not going to scrape the skin. You're being good. I know you're always good, but she's getting a little older. Don't know how much more of this she'll take up. Um, <clears throat> now, I don't know... If that was the, because actually it says that with the mass zapper, you don't even really need a detangling spray. You don't need any of that. But if you have it, you might as well use it. But I want to check real quick. If I don't use it, I'm flipping to the other side of the comb. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? So this is a medium firm. This is a regular brush. You could see the pins are created more in a diamond shape. So it's not so much for dematting or detang. It will detangle, but not as effectively as the matte zapper. Um, yeah. So both the I'm getting kind of caught up right here. That's going to the regular brush and no detangling spray. So um let me see if the man's zapper So the man's zapper does go a little bit through it. It's doing smaller strokes. It's not it seems like the other brush was getting hung up on it. And I can see in this brush that it is pulling the undercoat with the last week worth of hair, even without any spray. Yeah, it's probably two strokes on each spot of where I'm going. The second stroke is already through it. I'm actually really surprised with, I'm trying to figure out how this is working or how it works. And she's, she's not moving at all. I mean, she's really good normally, but it almost seems like this really isn't affecting her much at all. Where before, if I had this roughness and trying to go through, go to the Arturo one, which is the um, undercoat remover, I can go on this part of the coat and I'm not at the skin. If I try going against the skin, the brush is flexing back. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that question in a second, Buffy. That was, that was too long-winded for me to read. But this isn't really pulling. Let me try to go to her fronts. This it should be the same amount. So this is the this is the issue we come across with, with brushing at home. Now, I haven't brushed her in over a week, almost 10 days. So... That happens at home. Now, I passed through a couple times on her. And that looks, or not, that looks decent. That looks fine. But this is where the groomers will start going. And did you brush all the way to the skin? And I can go to my comb. And even the wider side of the comb, I can see it's getting stuck. So, no, you didn't go to the skin. You made it nice out here, but the hair grows from the skin, and that's where you want to keep it healthy. Um, and then this one's pretty tough. Like, yeah, it's not. She's already getting annoyed by it, and that's with it flexing back. So you can just see in the ingenuity of the way they compose the actual pins themselves to be rounded and slicker with the type of um, steel that they're using that it's not pulling as much or that it's actually going in between them. You can sit. Um, so the same thing would be for the ears that are very sensitive. Um, a lot of times you could just check it yourself because you're going to want a back to kind of pull, not pull, um, to brush against, which would be your palm. And I've used brushes before that 
I brush once or twice and my hand is getting all scraped up. I'm not even brushing her anymore. So anytime you hear those light little tangles or that noise that's making on the hair of the dog and you might think that we're actually torturing the dog or oh my how could you do that to the dog well you know what here i'm gonna do it to myself back of my hand where there's no hair and you could see essentially with the right product and the quality of it you're not damaging any skin which if you're not damaging the skin then you could go over to those more sensitive type hairs um and get away with it without having to break the hairs or cut the hairs um, but very fine haired dogs like the silky Yorkie Terriers, um, some books say you should never use a slicker on them. If you use it gently, you can do it. Um, because a pin brush can't always get everything. I want to see how quickly it gets it. Um, whoop, where are you going? There. I know you're never on a loop. You're confused, aren't you? Last I need is you to be jumping off. So, oh, that's what I wanted to do. So, just to compare the actual the Lake Push detangling spray, I put very little of that on. <clears throat> the Nature Specialties the Quicker Slicker has been one of my favorites for the past while, probably the past two years. Um, it smells really good. It's it is a concentrate, but so it does better. You have to spritz it on. And kind of let it sit in there for a minute to actually work into those tangles. I mean, for the quality of it and what it does for the coat for removing those mats or tangles, it's great. But we don't want to be spending, wasting time waiting for something to actually work in and get into those tangles. So I'm going to jump straight to, I just sprayed it there. I'm going to try to see, because essentially that's what I did with the Le Pouche. I went straight to the brushing. So I want to see how effective it is. <laughs> I can smell it right now. It smells really good. <clears throat> but it doesn't seem like, nope. Let me go. Actually, let me use the mat zapper. Same thing. Even with the mat, she's, you, I'm sorry. You didn't need to do that. <laughs> it doesn't seem to work right away, um, which I haven't had an issue before. Sometimes I usually spray it while I'm still combing out the ears or cleaning part of the eyes. Our eyes are clean already. Um, so I didn't really put any on the side of her body. I just want to check that real quick. If it's a lot lighter, I can just feel that it's lighter on it. It didn't dampen the coat completely. And it almost and in my hands, it's, I can feel the silkiness and the smoothness that it's giving right away instantly. Let me take this hair out. So essentially, that's all you have to do to remove the hair. All the hair is gone now. You don't really need a button on the back to push the hair off. I mean, if you do, more power to you, I guess. <laughs> um. So there is some resistance here, but what I'm noticing with her is she's not turning back to me right away. It was very, it, I mean, she might've done it a little bit before. Some, some of it was subtle, but I noticed right away. But this whole part right here, I just brushed the whole thing that now a comb is going to be able to go through it. I probably even go with the finer comb. Let me test with the moon comb. I feel like it really got straight to there and yeah. This is actually my finishing comb. And I could essentially go through it almost right away. So my first impression on these two items together now, I'm very surprised actually. I I was expecting the matte zapper to be a lot different or a lot better, but I didn't think that there could be that much difference in a spray. Especially just the way sprays work. And thinking that like certain certain things have to either be in there to break it down or make contact with it to kind of loosen it. This worked almost right away. So what I liked about that was 
you're staying as minimal um, how much you're applying to the coat. So you're not really dampening the whole coat, which at that end, if you're using something to dampen the whole coat, it's going to end up getting dirty because it's going to hold those particles. But able to use it, there was a mat right there. Able to use it right away. And with the mat zapper, the two together, you can actually see the mat that I just pulled out. So she did get a clump. That's one, one piece, that mat. That essentially was dead hair. And I don't think she really turned around at all. So gently removed it. And removed it almost instantly without having to wait for it to be soak into it or to break it apart to kind of loosen it up so i don't know amy if you're out there but i think you were mentioning you haven't used the detangling spray but i think i may have found my new favorite detangling spray <laughs> um but let me see here so I got these new combs because they're anti-static, antimicrobial, just a little cleaner, neater. Um, so yeah, I'm able to go through her leg pretty much right away, and there's almost nothing coming off on the comb. And we all know the comb does not lie. Um, if there was a tangle still in there, the comb would stop. It would either. Oh, well, you want me to do the other side of you? Hmm. Or do you want to go down already? So I think for now. It's pretty clear what I think of the matte zapper and the detangling spray. They seem to be working very good. That's literally the first time I used them. Um, this seems to be very gentle even on when I didn't spray her. Just the brush itself. If you're, I do a lot of brushing when I'm just out or sitting down with her somewhere. Um, it's almost mindless, so I won't always have a spray on me. But I'm continuously brushing, so I don't really need the mat breaker. Or I don't need a lot of spray. Sit. Settle. Um, so even without the spray, there's resistance. But I don't see her turning back and like asking me, hey, what are you doing over there? Um, so instead of two strokes and going through, it's three or four. But I'm able to do it at a slower pace and not have to try to rush through it or, or feel like, I'm forcing through it or it's dragging, kind of getting stuck. Um, and her coat's somewhat of a pain sometimes. So even here where it is pretty tangled up, she's laying down. She's going to start putting fuss, but I did not spray here. Um, instead of going line brushing and going line by line, there's a recommended a pat and pull. What you're going to do is since these don't have rubber tips on them, will actually go into it and kind of just pull straight out. So it's almost like teasing your hair or if you have like a big poof. Um, kind of just go in there and do section by section. It's like a mix between a regular brush and the line brushing. It's just a slightly different technique. Um, works just as well. Let's stay. It is really easy to clean though. And yeah. It's not really any hair on my shirt. I'm wearing a regular t-shirt, not even a smock. So that's pretty cool, too. That means I could eat easier without hair going in my food. Um, but, yeah, there's tangle, There's small tangles here. With the comb, I could find them right away. And I feel like I'm getting, a, getting through them with the matte zapper. And she's not... Um, objecting to it as much where I used to go with Arturo and to get through that I'd be I'd be brushing like as fast as I can going like six seven times yeah it's gentle because there's the flex on it but my arm would be shot so I'm just there like this and yeah I could same thing I could feel it not feel it and I have hair coming at me from this one now the whole time the mat zap right I didn't have any hair at me excuse me so that's a really nice feature in itself. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't hurt any, but it's also not doing much. I really got to fix this up here, though. Um, so that's what essentially got me to go with the Le Pouche ones, was it's also one, one 
part of the body. They're now made here in the U.S. Um, they had an issue with their quality a couple of years ago, so they stopped making them when they were outsourcing them. Um, the main difference on their products is the flexibility of the head. The more flexible it is, gentler it is. Um, so they do have other ones like the gold one, which is super flexible, similar to Sartura one, but it's using the same pins. So that's going to be for a really fine coated dog um, and ranging in between. Where other brands either have the firm back and longer pins. So yes, that's great for those long haired dogs might get in there, might make it a little easier, but if you have a short haired, not a short haired dog, but let's use a medium, medium length. You don't really need that long coat, but you might want the versatility or the quality. Your sacrifice, I believe you're sacrificing, sacrificing a little bit of quality in the actual pins. When you're going with longer flexible pins, um, that might be easier to, to remove those tangles or mats in the long hair. And one like this um and they do make these in the double wides so that way it's not as much work um but it's really a difference between the flexibility of the heads all you'd have to worry about um they do make the activet ones which they do have i think four or five different types of pins on their heads and um, if they have, they have like four diff four or five different types of pins, which means you're going to need one or two different ones for your dog. Um, which goes back to my original statement. If, if you're making a good quality of something and the right product, you don't need four or five different types of it. Like you'll essentially see, yeah. I don't know where I put my moon comb right now. Uh, so, this comb, I won't say right now exactly which brand it is, but you probably can't tell by just looking at it which brand it is because the three top um, high end brands pretty much make the same exact comb. When it's made the right way and it does what it's supposed to, you don't really need three or four different types or three or four different options. If there's um, a premium way to make it. It's just going to be made that way. So I believe a brand that's fussing around with, oh, this is a little different, that's a little different. It's more of like they're trying to pinpoint a specific market and make it just for them. So that way it seems like it's a premium quality, but it's really not. It was just altered to fit that person. And then you're going out there and finding um, exactly what you need for what you're looking for, as opposed to all right, this is high quality. This is what it's going to do. It's going to remove tangles, remove mats, or there's a different one that's going to, if you never get your dog tangled or matted, um, <clears throat> don't really have to worry about this. It's going to be a lot finer. So I'm hoping to replace all of those slicker brushes with just these two, you know, one or two of the sprays. Um, but if you have more sensitive of a coat, I've also read certain books where that say you should never use, I don't like the word never, but that you shouldn't use a slicker brush on a Yorkie. Um, okay, a pin brush, I don't, I'm just going to go quickly into that. Yeah, it's good to help, but it's not going to remove those mats or actually stimulate the um, skin to produce those oils. Um, if you're shaving it straight down, you're still going to need to brush a coat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, might be wondering, well, what, what do you need to brush a dog that's not shaved down but has a really short coat on? And essentially, I don't know, um, I guess the easy way to put it with way it's comparable if, if you've done some research on it at least is um, flea and tick medication that it's not supposed to be put on the dog three days before or three days after a bath. That's because 
it uses the natural oils in the coat and the skin to spread through the coat. Now, if you have shaved almost all of that hair off or made the hair very short, you've removed a large source of that oil or that highway that it's traveling on. So you need a way to spread, the, you need a way to move those things around and actually essentially you're gonna need to either do it yourself with a porous head brush um, or stimulate the skin itself <clears throat> to produce those oils and get it back to that healthy point. And that's typically why I say three days because the skin will realize what it's missing and start producing those oils. So it'll produce those oils, you're gonna to have to move it around for it. So, showing here, this one's, like I said, for puppies or just a bristle brush. It doesn't really do much as far as the tangling, but it kind of smooths out the coat. And if I were to just put a spray on her or something, I could easily use this and get over. Um, the bristles do great for moving that because they're very flexible. But with anything very flexible, it doesn't get all the way down to the skin. So that's why we like the slicker brush. If you're trying to be more gentle, trying to find something in between, you can't go straight to just a comb. Yeah, a comb's going to be gentle, but you'll be there all day trying to hit every single spot with the comb because the comb's just one row of teeth in a straight line. So you're going to have to kind of move a millimeter at a time. Um... So I, they've made a couple of them. This one is a duo brush. Um, so it's the regular pin brush, but on the inside has the boar's head. So outside pins are at a further angle, angling away. Um, makes it a little easier to kind of grab the coat where this is doing most of the work with the bristles um, to move any of those sprays around, move any of those oils around remove dirt, kind of work like a sweeper. Um, but the pins themselves, yeah, they're aluminum or steel, so they're still a little pointy. They, they're either rounded or softer to make it less. But this pin here is bent. This These two pins here are pushed in. Not like I abuse my combs. I mean, I, yeah, I do. This brush is labeled as for dry. I believe they had one for wet. I don't want to be buying two or three brushes for the same thing just because of one simple difference. So, I came across this brush, which is great for that sensitivity. Plus, we're also looking for... That, like, I deal a lot with the puppies. So something very gentle for the face, which will then also turn over into smaller dogs. Um, those those teacup Yorkies that have the really sensitive muzzles, anything like that. This one is a Chris Christensen. The, the pins on this are flexible themselves, but not like the one I showed you earlier, where I could bend these back, and they went right back to their original position. Um, that's just the way that, that they're mounted on here with the, the flexibility of the cushion itself. It's also very ergonomic the way they design it to reach, oh, she's resting, I don't want to bother her, to reach under, like the sensitive areas. I don't have to twist my whole hand to fit under there. It's almost like the comb, the brush itself goes that way, especially being smaller in size. Yeah, they do have the triangle size those triangle shaped ones to go into those sensitive areas but I try to find if one brush could do more than one thing why not just get that one brush and I mean some people might have endless amounts of money but I do but this even I feel is gentle enough even on a sensitive puppy face but to be honest the, the pins, yeah, they still might be a little scary, especially if you're near the eyes. It's a danger. Um, and if you're you're keeping up with the, the, the coat, you really wouldn't need that to worry about getting into the middle of a mat or middle of a, uh, um, a tangle or anything. So this one is going to... <laughs> I haven't done cleaned her eyes up at all. 
So this one, I can, as you can see just by the size of itself, but also it is, I don't have to stay scraping against her muzzle because of the angle they're at. And actually you can see some crusties came off in there. And that's without me even putting anything there. Um, similar to like the Matt Zapper on the legs, two, two swipes through and you could already see that probably put my detangler through here yeah where let me try to see the other side probably can't it's probably gonna get stuck for a second yep it's getting tank stuck there i'm not spraying or doing anything i don't i'm gonna try to say you can see how that is she's not really pulling away she's kind of going into rest she doesn't like her face being rushed but she accepts it and it's if it was bothering her, I would see her eyes staying open. But it's not. Like, her eyes, she's just like, all right, get it done with. So she lets me do it. And I just want to check right against the skin. Yeah. There's those little tangles that were right against the skin. They're not there. Um, again, I haven't brushed her in about a week or so um yes so this i would feel comfortable i'm gonna grab a puppy in a second to see on their face just because their um hair is more sensitive but um i wouldn't recommend using this slicker brush if your dog had either short hair or dry skin or any skin conditions that this might irritate because yes even though they've rounded the tips and made them gentle and they're flexible it's still sharp a slightly sharper so going to what i just showed you this um i guess it's considered a pin brush because of the pins but what they are they're actually nylon pins so nylon we know is very flexible um and it's not gonna scratch it's not sharp it's not a hard metal but uh so each nylon pin is wrapped individually with boar's head around it so you'll get that boar's head that soft scrubbing that's gonna spread the oils it's gonna what are you doing you trying to run away now um i used i use this a lot as a finishing brush actually when i put a leave-in conditioner or I'm just doing those final coats and I'm just trying to like passing through quickly. I have no mats, but the nylon pins will get right down to the skin. And I could put a good amount of pressure on this kind of to make sure I'm scraping, which is then going to activate the bristles, which are almost against your skin. So that's going to spread the oils. Or if, like I said, if I put any, to, she doesn't even care. It probably feels really good to her. And I don't have to worry about, am I burning her? Um, is it uncomfortable? Is it doing what it's supposed to do? Because if I grab a regular bristle brush like this one, I could even feel it's not getting down to the skin. It's doing good for the top. It's getting that off a little bit on the top. But to get down to the skin, you kind of have to put that pressure and feel the skin. And that's where the fear, when I first started doing my dogs, if I feel the skin and I feel the pressure, I feel like I'm going to be scraping them. But if you have the flexibility of a nylon pin, if you push too hard, it's just going to move it out the way. But the angle, that's why it's an oval brush. <laughs> also, the angles on it, you might be pushing a little too hard on one part, but the other part's going to come in right behind it. So... She'll let me do this all night, probably. Um, and on the grooming side of it, I love it because I could be off doing something or answering a question, kind of do this, where I'm using this, I need to focus on her. I need to make sure I'm not going to poke her eye out, make sure I'm not going to bother her too much or press too hard. Yes, it's a lot gentler. Um, so I would recommend this if you skipped a few days between brushing or you only want to brush like twice a week. Do this and do it slowly. Essentially, the recommendation is if it's a dog that needs to be brushed, like a Bichon, every day or two, you're going to need to brush it every day or two, or you can brush it 
once or twice a week for twice as long. It's going to take you the same amount of time, but your technique and it's going to be different. It's going to take you twice as long because you have to go nice and slow and cautious with it. So back here, I haven't touched your tail at all. So without anything, I can't just go in there and pull it. Like maybe if I put the spray on it. Um, so what I want to test on this is actually their degreaser, the like push degreaser. Um, it says it's for dematting, detangling, and removes earwax. So there's not. Her tail's not that bad. <laughs> I was hoping her tail would be worse. Um, it's that way I could actually try the dematting part of it. But maybe. Maybe, maybe just, yeah, she doesn't really like her neck being brushed that much, so I go shorter here. Um, I'll try there as a detangler. Extreme sensitive use of water. Like I said, this is, even this is new to me, so I'm kind of just going with this one. I knew about the ear cleaning, um, but I was told that it's really good as a detangle well it actually says on there dematting and detangling so but this is a little like i wouldn't mind if because now i know what it is if i was just a regular pet parent i probably wouldn't like this i'd want to stay with something that's either in a spray or easy to put on um i probably wouldn't want to be getting uh, liquid directly on my hands or you may feel like you put too much. Let's learn my lesson with that. I always add more. Ooh. It smells very citrusy. Um. So, it's not greasy, which some of the leave-in conditioners or the detanglers are either really silky and then I go to grab my brush or my comb and I feel like it's going to slip right out of my hands. What are you doing? Turn back around. Turn back around. So, again, if you have a young puppy, um, some smaller dogs, their tails are really sensitive. I normally, if they have a longer tail, like the doodles, I'll have them sit and I'll comb them or brush them right against the table. Sorry, there's a backing to it. She doesn't have that long of hair. But, um, I think, yeah, this isn't getting snagged up where I know before when I normally brush her, her tail without anything in it. It's not that it gets stuck. It doesn't, it doesn't separate the hairs as quickly. Like this, I can actually see can't see right now. I can actually see the strands of hairs are separated. This is why I love this brush right here. Tails, ears, and finishing. I don't feel it against my hand. And with that there, so that took me like five seconds. I'll try to see if I get in. Two. Just gonna show you the tip of her tail. I hope you could see that. Can you see it? Like literally each strand of hair separated separated on her. So let me grab a puppy real quick and see how they all hold up to these these tools on them. Cut you done. Yeah, that door's locked. Yeah. Well, let's see who's gonna be the guinea pig now of a puppy. Okay. One second. So, I guess 
the true test of sensitivity is it is it gentle enough for a puppy you sleeping what are you doing so i grabbed one of the black and white ones because <clears throat> the black hair on the Havanese at least naturally produces more oil so it's silkier but he doesn't have that much weight on him <clears throat> we need a way to spread that again same thing so that's where this brush comes in great on it because now this the white hair isn't naturally as oiled so you want to spread that out the skin is going to produce enough for the whole body but it's not going to know what's going where so it's our job to spread that part so just this even just by itself should be gentle enough to go straight through him. I'm trying to figure out if he likes it or not. They're used to the brushing already. I've gone through it already with them. So I could see right away, yeah. <clears throat> this is essentially making the coat here and here with his white and black. To me it looks essentially the same as healthy. Um as nourished, it's not dry. He's pretty dirty. Again, they need a bath. It's raining today, so they were out playing yesterday and today. They were supposed to get a bath. But <clears throat> the real task, I'm gonna jump back to the mat zapper. Um because this is the one that's removed again that tough, tangled, that dead undercoat, everything which we assume you need a strong, harsh brush for it, that removal or some type of deep matter that goes right up against it. Um, I haven't sprayed him at all either yet. Okay, he feels a little bit of it. That's why I didn't, buy, didn't turn around. He's also still getting used to being brushed. That's okay. Again, even with, oh, <laughs> he didn't like it too much, but still new to him, but it was two strokes, two brushes, and I got through it the second time. Right now, I can keep going in the same spot, and it's already detangled, dematted. That's without spraying. I'm sorry. Hold on. What was that? told you to be awake that backfired on you huh well you who told you to jump the, the fence before <laughs> so especially here with like a puppy he's gonna start being wild so i wouldn't want one of those slicker brushes that would take me four or five strokes if i can get this on him and do it once and that's enough to go through it i want to do as few strokes against his skin because that's what's, what he's being scared of it's bothering him. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Okay. So that way you don't have to keep repeating what he doesn't like. Um, so so that, that, did that did fairly well. He, it seems like he got more anxious with the actual process of the brushing it wasn't so much that brush itself or was any pain i didn't hear him yelp missy really it was more um still just the discomfort or he didn't he doesn't want to be held around he wants to be running around he thinks i got him out of because even when i'm holding him here he's okay with it now it smells really good though 
does smell really good. I'll have to get... So what I'm planning on doing is, this was the very first time I used these brushes, these sprays. So it's kind of getting a feel for it and giving you my real impression of what I think of them right now. But I'll be bathing and doing the rest of my dogs um, tomorrow and Monday, essentially using um, either the sprays or what I've been using before on a different dog to kind of see if I notice a difference. And other dogs, um, and then give a review later next week on them. So right now, these are still the Le Push products, which I've been going over. It was one of my happy hauls from Intergroom. So same, same description um, in the title of this. Still working on that drawing for the $15 Le Push gift card. What we're going to do is, I believe I've put in three ways to enter. So we're going to do until Sunday's tomorrow. I'm probably going to do one more video, which you could enter by. If you haven't, at least said hi right now in the chat. Make sure you say something so I can see your name when I go check later. And then also share. Um, so anybody who sees this video not live, just make a comment. Any type of comment, what you liked about it, that you saw it, something. Um, so that way I can check the comments as well. So if, if you either didn't catch it live or somebody just informed you right now to catch it, um, anybody watching it until the end of the month, until the 31st, that can all, all stop the entries. So it will be um, all, all tallied together and the drawing will be right after that. So... I'm just going to quickly go over and see if there's any specific questions or anything you want me to go over again or you might want me to work on for the next for tomorrow um, or go over a little more in detail. Uh, feel free to ask me if you're a groomer out there and you have information on either any other products or items similar to this one. Please weigh your opinion, send your opinion in. Um, try to bridge that gap between professional groomers and the at-home pet parent that wants the best for their pets um, and don't realize that we're able to get it for them. So any comments or advice given here would be appreciated by myself and the viewers or anybody looking at this down the road. Um, you guys are talking about raw food. I like all food. Raw, cooked, dog food. Mm. My dogs eat better than me, so yeah, dog food. So, um... I was going to download a little bit more, but my second dog got brushed out like half an hour before I started. Don't want to miss it through that. She's a pain. Um, but if you got to see the uses of a brush like this one, the nylon and border side is definitely one of my favorites for sensitivity, for um, gentle puppies. Um, this is their smaller one. They have a medium and a large one. Um, but it looks like, yeah, I'm very satisfied with the like, goose brushes I have right now. The construction of them, I'm confident that they're going to be lasting. It's They made them one solid piece, so it's not to have to worry too much about the handle lump coming off or the actual slicker part of it coming out. Um, and the pins either being removed. I've already seen a couple times even me going back like this. The pins return right back to their original state, which that's the most important thing is because each one is placed specifically where it is. So that way it works the way it does. So if these pins start bending or going different directions, it almost makes the brush useless. Um, Um, <laughs> um, so Buffy, yeah, we were talking earlier about brushing and 
I've seen a lot more videos recently um, with explaining why you need to brush a dog or what the purposes of it are. And we were just kind of discussing, like, well, why or if it makes any sense. And one thing that doesn't come across is um, that I say is, are you brushing the hair or brushing the dog? Because, yeah, if the dog's hair is cut really short, you might think you don't need to cut it. And some groomers might say, well, start brushing it to get them used to you brushing it. If you need to get used to me brushing, my tip is take the brush, use the back side of it. No dog's going to complain about the back side of the brush. And there, you can get the dog used to it even with long hair, and they're not going to fight you about it. Even if I knock them in the head a couple times or jumping over the fence in the middle of the day. Um, that's one way to get used to it. But brushing a dog is not just brushing the hair. I went in earlier. The reason why I love this brush is it has that boar's head which spreads the oils so the dog needs help we're taking it out of its natural environment of the way it's adapted so if we're doing all of that we need to assist it in helping those oils spread um dogs in the wild or wolves in the wild they're not getting haircuts like so, so they have that longer hair they have those natural oils spreading through the hair we cut that hair off we're cutting off that that streamline of oil on the hair. So we need to assist it. So we need to brush, just brush the dog for its health. Not just for the oils, but you're also removing dead skin. You're also loosening anything, opening those pores up just by brushing. Um, I think that led to the point of we take showers and we change our clothes daily or we change our clothes regularly, hopefully, hopefully daily, but not, that's not mine. Um, a dog's coat and skin is its clothing, unless if we dress them. So, if you're not, even if you're bathing your dog between grooming, say you get your dog groomed every three or four weeks and you're bathing it once in between, that means you're really only helping them get clean once every seven or ten days. And I wouldn't want to go seven or ten days without, without changing my clothes or, or putting deodorant on or brushing my hair. Even even though I don't have that much hair or something. So it's almost like a brush, a slicker brush. Yeah, your, your dog, like a Yorkie, might not have those tangles or knots or the hair might be straight. But it's not just the hair that we're brushing. It's, the brushing is a lot more to it than just the hair. So we want to make sure that we keep up with that. What are you doing, you crazy ball? I want to make sure that we keep up with that and kind of understand that it's not just to remove those tangles or those mats. There's more to it in the health of the dog, just like we want to make sure we walk it daily or exercise it right for its breed type. Um, <clears throat> that we're helping with that. So there's a lot of other cosme cosmetology reasons that we're going to need to care for the coat and the skin of the dog and that's essentially where i came across the Le Pouche products of why that's more of an all-in-one and you might have been looking earlier well this my dog i brush him two three times a day so the flexi one's good i showed you the flexi one yeah it's good for finishing because it's doing the the teasing the end of the hair but you're never really doing anything against the skin with the flexi once and you're going to need to switch to a, to one of the firm ones and why flip back and forth between two or three different brushes why not just use this one or some people might just overlook and say well I don't need to brush at all yeah you do um, even if you're dressing your dog daily there's multiple reasons why we need to do that um, so that, that yeah the clothing thing was one I believe the other other one where she had an aha was um, when I was like, we all wash our feet. When you go get a manicure, pedicure, or whatever, and you're really washing your feet, you use a pumice stone to scrape your feet. 
like to get the dead skin, to get the dead hit, the dead whatever off, to stimulate your skin. You're kind of reviving it. You're you're using dead sea particles, charcoal, this, that, the other, sea salt, all these things, just to help remove dead skin off your foot. Um, a dog has skin over its whole body and has dead skin, especially if we're not brushing it regularly. That's being reduced the oxygen level on its skin. It's not going to be as healthy. So we're going to want to try to help and aid it. And that's one way is by having a high quality brush. It's going to take care of all that. Hey, hey, what are you doing in here? Come here, dude. I forgot you were even in there. <laughs> um... So, I mean, there's more to it than that. So, I just wanted to go over the, like, Pooch products right now that I still have them as new that I'm just getting used to. So, whether you're a groomer, whether you're just interested in information or you're an at-home pet owner and want the best for your pet, I'm not saying that this is the absolute best product, but for my purposes and for what I'm looking for, that's why it works for me. Um, and it's worth its value, and I don't think I'm going to be going any other route anytime soon and have to buy multiple items of the same tool just to take care of one deal. Instead, I have this one tool to take care of multiple things. So I like that ratio better than the other way around. So if you like this video, please uh, share it. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on so that way you can see when... I am streaming. I like doing a lot of streaming. I'm still working on paying attention more to the chat, but I'm getting used to it on here. But I do like going over it, so you'll be able to ask those questions right away. And I will be more than happy to either go in detail while still on, or I'll go figure out the information for you. Um, like my email is in the description if you had anything specific you wanted to ask me separately, feel free to email me or um, comment if anything else comes up later and I'll catch you guys on the next stream. Uh, I believe the next one might be tomorrow, but whether it's just puppies or using these brushes a little bit more, won't be so much the description on them, it'll actually be them in use. So have a great evening or good morning, happy Easter, depending where you are. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night. You're welcome, Ansel.